Hello everyone, my name is Ashley Lothian. I'm the Curator of Education here at the San Bernardino County Museum. Today I'm joined by Crystal Cortez, our Curator of Earth Sciences. Hi Crystal, thank you for joining us. Hello! <laughs> Crystal, would you mind sharing your, your career journey, emphasizing your first memory of being interested in your respective field? Yes, of course. So uh, the biggest influence was my big brothers, which you can see right there with my grandfather. And then in high school, I also got to go out on a geology expedition and where I was able to find my very first fossil, which was a trilobite, which is that picture on your left. Um, but I have to say the most aha moment that I had in my career was being in the basement of the Raymond Alf Museum <laughs> as a very, very early starter. I was in community college still, and it, there was a desk full of a bunch of different things, and they said, okay, all this stuff needs to get put back. And so I was like, okay, fine, I'll, I'll grab all the stuff and I'll put it back. And sitting right there in front of me was impressions of dinosaur skin. And to me, that was the most aha moment ever. I was ob obviously trying to keep it cool. And I was like, be cool, be cool. <laughs> I didn't want to seem like the, the brand newbie into paleontology, but um, I, it was just so incredible to see those impressions right in front of me. I had dreamed of those moments ever since I was a little girl. And my brother first told me about dinosaurs, these giant beasts that used to roam the earth millions of years ago and right in front of me was something that I can touch. So for my career, Ashley, can you go to the next slide? I have done a bunch of different things. I have done uh, fossil preparation. I was also a collections manager. I did some mitigation, which mitigation is basically whenever there is a building being built, a paleontologist needs to be on site to make sure that they aren't destroying any fossil resources. And I have, off, I have also <laughs> done some research and that's what you see up at the top. And that's how I ended up being a curator uh, at a museum. Ashley? Very cool. Would you mind kind of briefly uh, describing um, the excavation site as a paleontologist? So once you arrive and you're surveying a scene, just how careful um, does everyone have to be when working with specimens and just the process? Okay, so um, it's I don't think it's as tedious as archaeology is because it's not as sensitive but it's still pretty difficult. So when you get out there, most of the stuff, you see this picture of me at an excavation site, and that is a uh, dolphin skeleton that I'm uh, trying to unearth there. And I really only have my my rock hammer and my my brush. <laughs> that is not always typical. You're usually having to chisel away at rock. It is the you have to think about these uh, sediments. They have been lithified over thousands, millions of years, sometimes billions of years sometimes. And so it becomes fairly difficult to actually take them out of the ground. Um, so once you actually go out there and you do the preliminary surveys, getting them out of the ground is a lot more difficult. And sometimes it requires you to go out there a few days, sometimes weeks, depending on how big your excavation site is. And so it can be a pretty tedious work. Um, I know that sometimes whenever I come back from the field, my arms are still sh vibrating from having to just sit there and, and pick and pick and pick and pick and pick um, and all that, that, <laughs> that reverb um, coming back at you. So it can be, it can be quite tedious, but once, so once we find the specimen and you, you go out there, you dig it out, you kind of create this, uh, platform mushroom type thing. So you kind of cut underneath it and then you put it in these jackets. And so um, the picture of me as a fossil preparator is actually preparing one of these jackets. So these jackets come out of the field, we open them up and then we're actually able to do all the fine detail work that we're not able to do in the field. Very interesting. So what would you say is your, is your greatest accomplishment in the field today or, or just within your museum career? Um, today, 
I thought my biggest accomplishment has been getting to do research in Thailand and doing, you know, paleontology in a whole different country. It was a completely different experience. I'm used to working with people that speak English. <laughs> And so it's completely different, you know, trying to break that language barrier and really trying to, you know, collaborate with these people that had completely different mindsets than you. And it's very enriching. And it was really an awesome experience just because it really tested my skills as a paleontologist, as a preparator, as a human being, just like being in a different country, thrown into these different environments. You know, I'm all by myself and I have one other researcher with me and the researcher she was very great and she she knew english really well so it was i was very grateful for that but um there was still you know going out with the museum it was still um a little funny because they would always play pranks on me like making me eat weird things <laughs> they wouldn't <laughs> tell me what it is until i actually ate it so i ate some cow lip and and uh tongue and duck beaks all kinds of weird things um but it was a very fun experience and i wouldn't i would say that that's probably the highlight of my career <laughs> mm -hmm. and, and what are these two pictures here on the left um, so those seeing? two pictures on the left the bottom one is actually of it's a partial jaw of a bovid um so that's going to be your your cow family buffalo all that kinds of stuff and then the very top picture is just part of our a hole <laughs> that we got. So we ended up finding a bunch of different stuff there. Um, the picture on the very right is us taking sediment samples so we can take some stratigraphy and kind of figure out where these bones came from. This was done in a sand pit. So they were essentially just getting water and throwing it at these sand walls and fossils would just come out of it like crazy so we're sitting there trying to like you know fight with the workers because some of the workers were actually looting some of the fossils and that's just fossil looting is is a problem that happens everywhere it's not just a, a problem that was there but um it was it was quite it was quite the ordeal we had to sit there and, and watch them work essentially all day and whenever they would go on a break, we have to run in there. And we, I don't actually give us uh, a scale as to how big the site was, but this was probably at least a mile big hole in the ground. So we were like running all through the entire thing. Um, it, was, it, was, it was an adventure. So as curator of Earth Sciences, what, what is the com most commonly asked question you get asked? the most common question as a curator of earth sciences so i have two um answers to that one is from the earth science perspective which is um the rocks and minerals and that is is this a meteorite and the second most common question that i get is is this a dinosaur egg a lot of um people seem to think that these concretions, which are naturally occurring structures that happen, um, it's basically just a piece of dirt kind of gets stuck in some sediment and it just gets rolled around again and 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 again. And it kind of just turns into this ball egg looking form. And a lot of people mistake those for um, dinosaur eggs or or other types of creature eggs, which they're not really dinosaur eggs, but if you break them open, there is a slight possibility that you may be able to find a fossil inside. Because again, like I said, it's usually a piece of sediment or something that gets stuck in the middle that causes these um, things to form. So they're rolling and rolling and rolling. And so sometimes the thing that gets stuck in the middle is actually a fossil. So you find fossils inside of the concretion, but the concretion itself is not a fossil. So to, to go back to the first question, how can people determine on their own whether or not they have uh, a rock or, or, or a meteor? So that's actually a little bit difficult to um, determine it on your own. Um, usually you have to go through a bunch of tests, but the prim 
the preliminary tests that you can do at home to kind of test if you have a meteor or if you don't have a meteor is to look at it, first of all. <laughs> so you want to look at it and make sure that it has kind of like these divots. They're called fingerprints. They kind of look like fingerprints on top of a rock. You'll notice it because it's very different from anything else that you see. Um, but those are basically formed from the rock entering our atmosphere at like a super hot speed. So it's just kind of coming in and all these things are breaking off of it. And that's what gives it these um, fingerprints. And then uh, another test that you can do is called a streak test, um, which you get a piece of unglazed tile and you kind of just strike it across. It shouldn't leave a mark. It should be blank because if you think about what a meteor is, you're probably dealing with a chunk of just solid metal. Um, and so sometimes it's not gonna leave a streak. Sometimes it leaves a streak, so make sure that it's really clean. And then the last test that I do is, is test for its magnetic properties. Um, it will be magnetic and it's gonna have somewhat of a strong uh, magnetic attraction. So if you get a magnet and you kind of put it up to it, it should just kind of, hit it right away it's not going to be one of those things where it's like very mildly um magnetic so if you kind of think about a magnet going across your keys right the your keys are going to be immediately attracted to that magnet and so that's going to be something that's similar where you'd see something similar happen in uh in meteorites i see um so final question as a paleontologist what is your favorite specimen species etc that um you research um my favorite is gonna be sharks look at those guys <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> this one took a big bite out of me um so my favorite is sharks i really love uh predators and really love how they how they work and how they function and what their function is and what their main role is in an ecosystem. You know, we uh, talk about keno species, um, but we talk we don't really talk about what the keynote species does as to um, its functionality within an ecosystem. And so I really love to kind of dive deep into the sharks. Uh, like, why is it there? Right? Um, so I study fossil Miocene sharks. Interesting. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for joining me, Crystal, and we'll see you next time. Bye. Thank you.